So let us quickly run through adrenaline versus cocaine. Adrenaline causes midri acid. 1 is to 1000 is the concentration of the solution. You repeat it in 5 minutes, use for open angle glaucoma. And it can be used with procaine and atropine if there is severe iritis. That is what you need to remember. Cocaine. It is toxic to corneal epithelium. And it inhibits the action of amide oxidases. And hence it will reduce the uptake of the norepinephrine. And it is used to diagnose the Hornet syndrome. That is what you need to remember. Then phenylephrine. It also causes pupillary dilatation, conjunctival vasoconstriction is what you need to remember. Then um, I leave the literature for you on meiotics and midriatics is one thing in pharmacology which you need to take it a little longer. But if you take tropic amide doctor, tropic amide blocks the acetylcholine. It is a anticholinergic drug which is used in ophthalmology. It causes both the midriasis. Yesterday only we discussed now. Oculomotor now, sphincter pupillae, and the parasympathetic stimulation lead to meiosis. So, any blockade of that parasympathetic by the tropic amide lead to cycloplegia, ciliary muscle relaxation. At the same time, pupillary dilatation is what you need to ultimately remember. Now, the next question. What are the indications of retinal laser photocoagulation? This many times we discussed. Already you know very well. Proliferative diabetes, macular edema, Yields disease. What is ELU ELU of about Yields disease? Yields disease is hypersensitivity reaction towards the tuberculin protein that lead to development of a venulitis of the vessels in the eye leading to the development of vitreous hemorrhages in a young man who had a past history of TB developing this hypersensitivity which attacks the vessels vasculitis and leading to the development of vitreous hemorrhage is Eels disease. Similarly, retinopathy of prematurity where any hypoxia stimulates the retina to develop neovascularization. So, to kill all those new vessels from developing, you use the retinal laser photocoagulation is what needs to be remembered. So, summarize doctor, pan retinal photocoagulation, what are the indications? Number one, proliferative diabetic retinopathy, neovascularization of iris called rubiosis iridis. Even a severe non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy where there is a poor compliance for follow-up. Right? You, are, you tell the patient, sir, still your retina is okay, it is non-proliferative, but your sugars are very bad, sir. Before I do cataract surgery, please control your sugar. But the patient doesn't listen to you. He is eating rice, rice, rice. And uh, he is not at all moving, continuously sitting, sedentary. And his sugars are shooting, then what do you want? What, what you need to do? Before the cataract surgery, you may need to use a pan retinal photocoagulation. Similarly, even if there is a non proliferative uh, changes, then uh, but uh, if they are uh, severe non proliferative, then if there is a renal failure or a one eyed patient, or if there is pregnancy, if the if the uh, non proliferative changes are very severe. Indication for pan retinal photocoagulation. Central retinal vein occlusion, branch retinal vein occlusion, sickle retinopathy, Yields disease, and Irvan. What is Irvan? Idiopathic retinal vasculitis, aneurysms, and neuroretinitis. There also you need to use pan retinal photocoagulation, is what you have to basically remember. Now, with regard to the tear film, why do we get tears is an important question. What is the constitution of our tears is a very important question. So, there is an aqueous layer, lipid, mucus. There are three layers in the tear. 
lipid layer is produced by the meibomian glands and any deficiency of tear film obviously lead to zero salmia that is dryness of eye and uh, the whole purpose why god gave us tears is to not in a, not to dry out the cornea now the question comes what are the components of tear film what do they do outer lipid middle aqueous inner mucin outer lipid lubricates the eyelids lowers the surface tension of the tear film and uh, aqueous it supplies the atmospheric oxygen to all that avascular corneal epithelium there is a most important purpose your corneal epithelium is avascular it doesn't have blood supply to provide oxygen but your middle aqueous layer of the tear will enable that oxygen absorption from the atmosphere into that avascular corneal epithelium is what you need to remember inner mucin provides lubrication and protection by preventing foreign body deposition so the aqueous layer of the tear film if you take it is being produced by the lacrimal glands lacrimal glands and the lipid layer is by the meibomian glands is what you have to basically remember now the next question is horner syndrome what are the features even a 10th class student also will answer this question is my tension nahi hai exophthalmos nahi hota anophthalmos hota agar ye question bhi wrong kare to we are not eligible to dream about uh, neat pg i am telling on a lighter vein you can still dream about neat pg just it's a matter of correction of little here and there you should know 650 topics 20000 points you are the topper in the top uh, 100 ranks guaranteed if you don't know there is no shame about it no problem now you can know that that is a whole uh, idea of preparation let me tell you don't be scared by the guy who said hey i finished three times revision of horizon all my color uh, sketch pens are dry you say damn bullshit i don't care about you what you are what you read everything how many times you read mota mota books doesn't matter at all how specifically you read how focused you read these 650 topics david sen is too much for need pg harrison ka baat to mere samne mat karo even md general medicine final year exams also we did not read harrison let me tell you till the next week exam hai to aaj bhi hum night duty kar rahe last moment mein nikalo yaar david sen and uh, we quickly checked what we read in mbbs after all mbbs and md doesn't differ questions will be the same only answers will slightly differ because 3 years you know how to treat the patients so there is a reason don't be don't start thinking which book is better which is that better this better if you can read a simple guide of the past 15 years of aims also you can still crack the exam wherever the concept you are unable to follow you have youtube videos you have got google images you have got many online resources including you medico app which will help you to catch up with that missing concept but you should be good with 650 topics that's the whole idea so meiosis why meiosis happen the tarsal muscles they have got the tarsal muscle elevates the eyelid there is a sympathetic innervation to the tarsal muscle whenever horner says sympathoplegia the tarsal muscle affected and that lead to development of the ptosis then hydrosis after all your sympathetic nervous system make you to sweat if it is if it is paralyzed you have en hydrosis and anophthalmos and uh, meiosis these are the classical features what leads to the development of midriasis <clears throat> is a very important uh, question i am very happy to see 203 online students today evening wonderful wonderful midriasis is caused by atropine in horner you have meiosis neurosyphilis there is argyle robertson pupil there also there is a failure to um um dilate 
OP poisoning, you have excessive acetylcholine activity that lead to development of meiosis. Opium poisoning is known to lead to meiosis is what's interpreted. Remember it. 